Hi everyone. My kids are Rocket League fans, so this year I threw race car themed birthday parties for them. I made them two car cakes to go along with the theme, cupcakes, and these race car themed cakesicles. Today I'm going to show you how to create this amazing race car cake from scratch. We'll go through the entire process from planning, stacking and carving the cake to decorating it with modeling chocolate. Let's get started. First, let's talk about planning ahead. You can bake your cakes ahead of time and freeze them until you're ready to use them. I used two moist vanilla sheet cakes to make a 28 by 43 centimeters or 11 by 17 inches car cake that was also 19 centimeters or 7.5 inches tall. You can find the cake recipe and pan sizes I used in the video description. For all my 3D custom cakes, I create templates to make carving and shaping easier. For this race car cake, I used two 33 by 48 centimeters or 13 by 19 inches thick corrugated cardboard cake boards to make templates. This type of board is strong and sturdy. I placed one of the boards on a flat surface and traced the shape of the car using a pencil. I also made trapezoid templates for the windshield and side windows out of parchment paper. You can find the specific sizes at the link in the video description. Then, I used the first cake board template to create another template from the second corrugated cardboard cake board, as well as one from parchment paper. The second cardboard cake board template is used as the floating cake board on which we'll place the decorated cake at the end. Why floating? Because I attached these styrofoam ball halves to the board using a glue gun creating a small distance between the base of the car and the surface under the cake. This way, my tires and car look more realistic. The easiest way to cut the styrofoam balls without creating too much mess is by heating a knife or cutter blade. The hot blade melts through the styrofoam, giving you smooth, precise cuts. Lastly, I always have printed pictures of what I want to make, whether it's a design generated with AI apps or downloaded from the internet. Make sure to have printed pictures of your design handy. Now, let's fill and frost our cake. Bake your cakes and make the frosting ahead of time. I used a moist vanilla cake, which is great for carving, and filled the cake with raspberry cream cheese buttercream and fresh raspberries. I also used a vanilla and strawberry flavored sugar syrup to keep it moist. You can find the ingredients and recipes in the video description. My cake consists of three main layers of vanilla cake and two layers of filling with fresh raspberries. First, use the template to cut the car shape from the first large sheet cake. My big cake pan was 38 by 38 centimeters or 15 by 15 inches. Then cut the cake horizontally in two and transfer the top layer to a separate cake board. Since my sheet cake wasn't long enough, I had to use leftover cake to build the front of the car. If you have a rectangular cake pan that's as wide and long as your car, then you don't need this extra step. If using sugar syrup, moisten your first cake layer with sugar syrup, then spread cream cheese buttercream on top and add fresh raspberries, previously washed and dried. Place the second cake layer on top and moisten it again. Next, cut the second vanilla sheet cake using the template. Cut the sheet cake horizontally in two. 
My second sheet cake was a bit smaller, 30 by 30 centimeters or 12 by 12 inches. Use only the back two thirds of the template. This is because as you build your cake up, the front of the car will be slimmer than the back. So you'll need more cake at the back and less at the front. Spread cream cheese buttercream on top of the second cake layer and place fresh raspberries on two thirds of the cake only, i.e. the middle and back of the car. Place the third cake layer on top and repeat. Use leftover cake and cream cheese buttercream to build the middle and back of the car. Once filled, cover it with plastic wrap and freeze for two to three hours. Freezing the cake makes it much easier to carve without it breaking apart. Now, let's carve and cover the race car cake with chocolate ganache. First, make your chocolate ganache using the recipe in the video description. Cover it with plastic wrap, touching the surface to prevent condensation from forming, and allow it to cool until it reaches a thick pouring consistency. Now, it's time to carve. Using a serrated knife, start shaping the cake into a car. I didn't use any templates for this part other than the base cake board template, but I always refer to my car picture for guidance. Don't be afraid to cut into the cake to make more pronounced shapes the angles will look less drastic once you cover the cake in modeling chocolate. Note that your car-shaped cake board needs to be visible as you carve the cake. You need to leave enough space so that you can cover the cake with ganache, with the modeling chocolate, and add the car design details made out of the modeling chocolate. Everything needs to sit on the cake board, so you should leave at least 2.5 centimeters or one inch of cake board around the carved cake. Use the cake scraps to fill in any gaps and build up areas like the car hood. Then chill the cake in the fridge for an hour. Crumb coat the cake with a thin layer of chocolate ganache using a small offset spatula. Refrigerate for an hour, then apply another layer of ganache and smooth it out. Now onto the fun part, making this cake look like a race car. I'm using modeling chocolate, 
which is easier to work with than fondant. This was my first time working with modeling chocolate, and it won't be my last. It's easier to cover the cake in sections, hide the seams, and it doesn't dry out as quickly as fondant. Plus, it's much more delicious. You will need red, black, and white modeling chocolate. Check the video description for the quantities required. I used satin ice modeling chocolate, but there are other brands too. The red one was my favorite. The black one was a bit crumbly and required more kneading. And the white one was okay. Knead your modeling chocolate until it's nice and pliable. Then, dust your surface with cornstarch and roll out the red modeling chocolate to cover the back of the car. Measure the part of the car that you want to cover and cut the rolled modeling chocolate accordingly. Use your templates to trace, using a toothpick, where your windows will be placed on the cake. Place it on the cake and smooth it out with your hands and or a fondant smoother. If you have any excess modeling chocolate, trim the edges with a sharp knife. Next, use your templates to trace and cut out the windshield and side windows from rolled black modeling chocolate. Place them on the cake Roll out thin logs out of white modeling chocolate to cover the seams. Smooth out the seams with your fingers. Continue rolling and cutting the modeling chocolate covering your race car cake in sections and replicating as many of the design elements as you want based on your car picture. If you have any gaps, modeling chocolate makes it easy to cover them without leaving any noticeable seams. Simply roll out modeling chocolate in the shape of your gap, place it on the cake, and use the warmth of your fingers and fondant modeling tools to smooth out the seams. The chocolate will slightly melt and the seams will blend in and won't be visible much. Now let's add the final details. The headlights, I made them from white modeling chocolate and melted gelatin mixed with a bit of water placed in tiny sphere molds. 
It was tricky to get the gelatin to stick to the modeling chocolate, even when using edible glue, so I'm not sure if it was worth the trouble. I like the look, but I'll need to find another solution for next time. I considered using melted isomalt, but I did not use this out of fear that it would melt. Once I placed the cake in the fridge, I made the car tail light similarly using red modeling chocolate and melted gelatin mixed with red food coloring. I initially tried adding melted chocolate on top of the gelatine, but when I unmolded these, the chocolate didn't stick at all to the gelatine, so I adjusted my plan to use modeling chocolate instead. I placed the headlights on these black rectangles on which I brushed white petal dust stripes using a fluffy brush and this template. I then painted the edges using a brush and white oil-based food coloring. You can use edible glue to attach all these small parts to each other and then to the car. The grill was made out of black and white modeling chocolate. I used the tip of a toothpick and white food coloring to add tiny dots and achieve this look. And now on to the final assembly. Place your cake onto the floating cake board, then onto a larger cake board. For the tires and rims, use black modeling chocolate. Press small balls of modeling chocolate into soccer ball shaped silicone molds Freeze them for five minutes so that you can remove them without ruining the design. Press modeling chocolate into a nine centimeters or 3.5 inches wide circle cutter until it's almost full. Make an indentation in the center for the rims. Slightly press the hardened soccer ball shaped rims into the center of each tire. Remove the tire from the circle cutter and use your hands to soften the sides and make them slightly round.
Finally, use a fondant blade tool or the back of a knife blade to create marks on the tires. Place the tires on the cake and secure them with edible glue if needed. The cake board is a bit visible here, so I used this to add extra support for the tires. I made an indentation on the back of the tire to slide the cake board right in. And voila, the final product. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you learned how to make a race car cake from my experience and created your own cake, I'd love to hear from you and see your final result. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.